Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today sharing three free to play Hog Rider decks that will help you guys out if you're trying to get past Arena 6, 7, and onto Arena 8. You can see here I'm at 1841 trophies. I put together three decks a Hog Cycle deck over here, a, a, tr a classic Trifecta deck as deck number two, and then a Trifecta deck with some alterations, including the Freeze spell. That will be the third deck that we play today. So, what I'm going to do is basically do six live attacks, go through each one of these decks one after another rotating and then we'll talk about each deck's strengths and weaknesses as we go through these matches so I'm gonna start out with Spear Goblins right off the bat here probably gonna hold off on the Hog Rider actually let me just go ahead. okay whoa whoa he's playing Hog Rider let me go ahead and put a mini P.E.K.K.A down on the board and he'll probably get a hit or two off my left tower here so this is the fastest deck we're gonna be playing today with an average elixir cost of 2.9 so I love the fire spirits in this deck for situations just like that one a bunch of level 10 minions coming my way need something to help take them out in at a, at a two elixir cost fire spirits are a great option for that so the deck overall was a very aggressive and fast deck the reason it's called the hog cycle deck basically is because you can quickly cycle over to the hog rider oh rocket coming at me right now quickly cycle to the hog rider uh using all these very very cheap cards skeleton army will zap that in one shot there and this will be a really really uh lucrative push here in the right lane I'm gonna back it up with a fireball too. Hopefully we can get that tower down. Actually, we cannot not even close 450 or so hit points left on that right tower. So anyway, back to the deck here. We have the uh, cannon, which is definitely gonna be instrumental to this deck defensively. That's really our only defensive weapon in this deck. Obviously, you have spear goblins, you have goblins, you have fire spirits, you have a lot of troop damage, and you have a little bit of direct damage with the fireball and the zap spell. But other than that, if they're coming at you with a bunch of heavy firepower or a hog rider or something in a pinch defensively you're going to really rely heavily on that cannon so i'm going to use goblins here spear goblins excuse me to distract this prince i'm going to have to drop my mini pekka as well i'm going to parlay him with the hog rider in the left here and i don't really have anything besides those fire spirits at hand and the idea with all of these hog decks no matter what you're playing if it's the trifecta deck or if it's the hog cycle deck like this deck the idea here is you're going to have to be prepared to push in the opposite lane in some of these battles. Sometimes you'll just be banging your head against a wall going down the same lane over and over and over again, especially once your opponent knows what's coming. So remember, always hit the opposite lane here and there to keep your opponent guessing and keep them honest. I have Zap ready here. Again, the skeleton army is going to be zapped in almost one shot there. Missed two of the 21 skeletons there, but you can see that's going to be enough. I have his right tower down. He did a decent amount of damage to my left tower, and mainly that was that very first push. So let's go hard here. Here comes his rocket, but we're going really hard in the left. Have the zap ready again in between the two towers. That makes sure I can uh, temporarily freeze both the towers rather than just one. And that's going to be it, guys. I'm going to put the cannon over here just to make sure his hog rider does not get to my left tower. Don't want to give him a free tower there. And uh, that's going to be our first match. So a win on the board. Feeling pretty good about this start to this episode, guys. And against the level 9 too, so pretty good. So, uh, GG Trigger, let's go ahead and move right on to our next deck, and then we will uh, continue this little push here. Maybe we can get to Arena 7 for the first time on my free-to-play account. That will be uh, pretty exciting. If we do that, I'm not sure if we'll be able to make up enough trophies, though, in just six matches, but this will take a significant amount of time. So now we're playing the Trifecta deck. So I am not the best Trifecta deck player in the world. I think I'm probably average, maybe a little bit above average, Average if I'm being kind to myself, but uh, let's go ahead and play this cannon right off the bat here, and we'll zap these goblins as well as that uh, that hog there. So that was good. Now we're just going to turn this into a little mini push in the left here. I'm not sure. He probably has enough elixir to counter this, but we have basically the uh, Valkyrie, the Musketeer, and a, a Spear Goblin or two that survived that zap spell. Uh, a poorly placed zap spell on his part there, and we actually get a lot of damage onto that tower. In fact, look at that, guys. We just take that tower out. So what a good start to this match we're gonna keep aggressive here with a hog rider in the right lane i think should i play i don't eh. 
You know what? Let's not. Let's not. Let's uh, well, let's do the hog rider. Let's keep him honest, and then we'll musketeer over here. So of course, maybe I shouldn't have musketeered, but I do have the zap spell that's gonna take down the uh, the Valkyrie as well as the spirit goblins, and then he is gonna get three or four hits with that hog rider on my left tower. Uh, but I did get two or three hits of my own on his right tower, so maybe I shouldn't have been so aggressive with that hog rider there. But I was at nine elixir or ten elixir, so uh, I don't regret the decision. Plus, you do always want to keep them on their toes, even if you have the lead. So we're gonna. Gonna put the cannon here anticipating a hog rider and there it is hog rider perfectly placed cannon if you can get the cannon down before the hog rider reaches that meridian point in the map the halfway point i guess the equator mark in the map uh then you can put the cannon one spot to the right there like i did in just that example uh zap right here Ooh, look at that zap the good value there on those spirit goblins as well uh but you can see if the if the hog rider passes the halfway point of the map you can't place your cannon where i did you have to make sure you place it more towards the center uh, or more towards the tower so just a little note there in terms of cannon placement I have even myself fallen victim of that before where I placed the cannon a little bit too late as you can see my opponent did that actually a little bit earlier this match and if you're a little bit too late then don't panic just put your cannon uh, right over here for example or maybe one square closer to my king tower but either way we're just playing defense here being pretty aggressive again I'm gonna drop the spear goblins here have the zap ready this time he gets the cannon down in time however However, I am probably going to get a hit or two with this Hog Rider. Okay, one hit, I'll take it. At this point, we're in the significant lead, so let's just play defense here. And this Trifecta deck, I feel like it takes... Well, I was going to say I feel like it takes a little bit more skill to play than the Hog Cycle deck, but that's probably a misnomer. I don't think it takes necessarily more skill to play one deck or the other. But the Trifecta deck is perfect for somebody who may be very comfortable with some of the cards in the deck because there's a lot of crossover in both Barbarians, Valkyrie, and Musketeer. First of all, I should mention, speaking of Barbarians, I'm not sure they're my favorite card in this deck. I might substitute them out for another card. Just not sure what yet. It could be maybe Archers, could be a mini P.E.K.K.A. That's something to play with. I I'm going to stick with the deck because I said I would stick with the decks that I have so far, but maybe a mini P.E.K.K.A. would be better in this deck. Uh, I, I tend to underuse Barbarians, especially in this trophy range, because the main use of Barbarians when you get a little bit higher is anti-royal giant and of course a little bit of anti-miner as well if you place them right on top of your crown tower to defend against the miner they can be uh they can be very useful as well as a counter so anyway let's hop into the third deck here guys we have free spell added to the trifecta deck now this is a tricky deck and whenever you use the free spell first of all i feel like free spell is underused right now i don't think a ton of people just based on tv royale what i see in the forums and what i see in my tournaments not a lot of people are using freeze and honestly, I still think Freeze is a very useful card in the game. Now, now we're playing against Royal Giant, so now, hopefully my Barbarians come in handy. Just a hair second too early there on that cannon, but either way, the cannon did its job. Now, let's sneak in this Hog Rider and Skeletons in the right lane. Let's see if he has an answer for this. I'm going to Freeze here, I think, guys. Uh, oh, a little bit late there on the Freeze. Not late, but I didn't have the four elixir, so we're going to sit back on the Freeze. But the Freeze, the first time you used it, should be very 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 effective because most of the time for whatever reason your opponents just don't see it coming and I'm too busy blabbing about freeze that I totally missed that hawk rider in the left lane so that's not good over there he actually gets like six or seven hits in on my tower that was really really bad uh, but we'll, we'll recover hopefully now this is the only deck that I'm using today that has an elixir collector in it and I like that because the average elixir cost in this deck is 3.5 which is pretty uh, significantly higher than the hawk cycle deck obviously and it is uh, the same cost as the second deck but not quite as versatile I feel defensively as the traditional trifecta deck with the barbarians and such or that defensive unit you can see there's no mini P.E.K.K.A. no barbarians in this deck so I can't use my free spell there obviously let's go ahead and put a musketeer down we're going to need the minion help as well I'm going to put the minions up here to distract those minions away from my crown tower and now it looks like he's gearing up for a defense here with the uh, ice wizard in the right. Now, I'm not using any legendaries in any of these decks. However, I do have the Ice Wizard myself on this second account because I was lucky enough to actually get the Ice Wizard in a crown chest, I believe. Either that or a free chest. I totally forgot. It's been a while now, but I actually shared that when I did that in a video on my second account here. So, I'm just going to play defense here. He seems to really have focused on my right tower. That means he probably has Fireball that I have not seen yet. My first freeze is a success here, 
boom. Now that is what I'm talking about with that first free spell. He played the minion horde, and you're thinking when you play the minion horde, that's going to be a definite easy counter to a hog rider all by himself. But that's when I bust out the freeze for the very first time. And look at that. He missed with his fireball. Oh, no. That is, could not be what he was going for there. I have freeze ready again. Is he going to play? He's going to play the barbarians. Now, this is not going to be as effective, this second freeze spell, because obviously I couldn't freeze his king tower as well. But I do have enough elixir left to defend a little bit here. We'll see what he does. I think he has zap spell, so he should be able to zap that tower right now. Is he going to? Okay, there's the fireball just in the nick of time. And guys, look at all the damage I did to that crown tower. Uh, the king tower, excuse me. I didn't even notice all that. I don't, I don't even know what happened there. I didn't even notice anything. So here's the freeze. This is a good, good freeze here. This is where it should be. The freeze spell, if you sneak that hog rider in from the center of the map when you're playing the freeze spell, you can freeze whatever they play to counter your hog defensively, and you can freeze both towers at the same time. So that's where you want to play your hog rider. And look at this. He's coming at me with a lot right now. Let me focus here. I'm going to drop the Valkyrie, try to take out this wizard, uh, especially here. And I'm going to keep things going with some minions as well. I don't want him to do too much damage here, but maybe I should have focused. There's only 20 seconds left. I was going to say maybe I should have focused just on this king tower here. The musketeer might take it. Nope, she's not going to take it down. Uh, let's go ahead and put another musketeer down. There's only 10 seconds left. Can the musk? Oh, no. Musketeer is going to be targeting the royal giant. Oh, what is there left to do? Come on, musketeer. Take it down. Skeletons on the... Okay, musketeer. One shot, baby. One shot. Boom. One Oh, they're, oh, wow. Literally one second left in that match. Well played, Turtle Soup. Well played. Uh, wow, that was a good match there. I thought for sure it was going to be a tie, and it would have been my own fault there because I really dropped the ball. Did, I was still focusing on that crown tower when I could have been going after the king tower there. I didn't even realize I had that much damage off of it. I'll have to rewatch that one after this recording is done to see what even did that damage there. I didn't even notice anything. So I'm going to come out the, ga uh, out the gate here uh, on this cycle deck again, playing the, uh, the spirit goblins. If I don't have the hog rider in my deck, or sometimes even if I do, before they play anything sometimes I'll go ahead and I'll play the hog rider I'm ready I'm sitting here ready for the zap spell now let me just run things back uh, really quickly here uh, you can say use the zap spell I'm almost gonna take down this entire tower I'm gonna fireball right here got a lot of bang for my buck with that fireball I'm gonna place the cannon to distract the witch didn't get the P.E.K.K.A. but you can see those fire spirits really did a good job there of damaging that P.E.K.K.A. The, uh, the, the the witch obviously as well as all those skeletons summoned by the witch so as I was saying oh my god I gotta keep playing here, forget it. Mini P.E.K.K.A. on this uh, this Hog Rider. So if my starting hand, if I have Spirit Goblins in my starting hand to start out a match, sometimes I'll use them all by themselves and just see what the opponent does because half the time, by the, by the time that they play any card, whether it's a counter to the Spirit Goblin or whether it's another card on the opposite lane, uh, half the time I'm able to recoup at least one of my two expended Elixir during that downtime anyway. And look at this, I'm gonna take this right tower down right now. Uh, not really paying attention to this witch, unfortunately, because I'm too busy talking to you guys. This is awful. I'm awful. If you guys have ever seen me stream, I am notoriously bad playing live as I commentate. Just not natural. Not, it's natural to really focus in on your match. But so far, so good in this episode, at least. We haven't lost in our first cycle through these decks. And so far, so good in this next match on the second cycle with these decks. So... As I was saying, Spirit Goblins, I'll play them all by themselves to start out a match. I'll see what my opponent does, and if my opponent goes in the left lane like they, or the opposite lane like this opponent did, sometimes I'll just go hard in that other lane knowing in a deck like this it's fast enough and it can defend well enough that I'm able to most of the time recoup at least some of the damage or mitigate some of the damage that would have been done to my other tower. So as you can see here, stopping this P.E.K.K.A. very easily here. Granted, it's a uh, only a level 3 P.E.K.K.A. I think. I think my peck is only level 1 or 2 on this account, so I guess that's probably normal for this trophy range, but I'm curious to know what, what trophy range you guys are in. That's something that I've really never asked you guys, so if you could comment below, I'd really appreciate it, just so I can get a feel for you know, what your best trophy limit is, what your best trophy range is, or your trophy record is the word I'm looking for here, and then I can kind of cater more content towards whatever the most popular response is for you guys. I'll always cover every trophy range, pretty much. Let me just go aggressive here at this king tower here uh i don't care about my left tower that much so uh maybe i'll get the three crown will i will i will i zap it let's go three crown there it is all right sweet 
You know, rarely do you get a three crown with the uh, the Hog Cycle deck. It's more of a one nothing or two one victory deck. Uh, but you know, able to capitalize on a couple mistakes on his end there and uh, pull off that lucky three crown victory. So now let's go to our second to last match in this episode, where we're gonna go with a classic trifecta again. I don't know why, guys, but I'm really scared of this deck more so than the other two in the uh, in this episode. Mainly because I just like I said in the beginning of the episode, I just don't think I'm an, a, a, that skilled of a trifecta player. Uh, not like Jordan, I know you guys have seen two of his videos now, man, I'm really, I'm continually impressed by that guy, the way he plays this trifecta deck, I feel like I'm nowhere as good as that, but I do know the basics, so, uh, Rocket coming at me in the right, I'm not too worried about that, it seems like a lot of people are playing Rocket in Arena 6, it's not one of my favorite cards, to be honest with you, because look at this, because he expended all that elixir on that Rocket, I'm able to do a lot of damage to this right tower, way more than he did to me, and I'm still able to do a lot of damage to those minions as well. Don't have to worry about a miner. It's funny, I'm so used to playing in, uh, oh, I do have to worry about a free spell. Let's drop these spear goblins, and that was well played there. Let's go ahead and tell him, well played. Uh, but you know what, guys? I don't know. I feel like Trifecta is something I'm still learning personally, and I and I think I would prefer taking these barbarians out, at least for me, for my play style. Uh, let's fireball real quickly here. Hopefully, I can take this tower down. Oh, and of course, I can't. Uh, but either way, we're doing all right. Just got to be ready for that free spell on his side there. I have a free spell as well in my next deck, but not in this one. It's funny, I'm getting these three decks kind of confused at this point. But I know it's a popular request that you guys have uh, is is bringing more no legendary decks that can actually be effective and I know a lot of youtubers out there no names and uh, no hard feelings for sure but I know everybody's really a big fan of saying that this is the best deck ever or the best deck or the best deck or this is the best air deck best hog rider deck best whatever deck and even I have a, have a have a series called best tournament decks plural but I do find it kind of strange that everybody's proclaiming every single deck is the best deck in the game and none of these decks are the best deck in the game the ones I'm showing you today they're all a Effective decks that have been proven and play tested as I lose that right tower there a uh, little bit on my on my pedestal here on my soapbox need to take a step off for a second here but basically what I'm trying to say is not knock other youtubers or content creators but I know my viewership is savvy and smart enough in general I think you're smarter than the average viewership of, of any video out there but you know what I think you guys are smart enough to know that you know all the clickbait and stuff are going on out there right now it was weird that he rocketed my musketeer awful that value trade there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Spear Goblin and Zap here, but I'm ready for, oh boy, the free spell. I was going to be ready for the free spell. Drop Barbarians. I should have dropped the Fireball there, but he's not going to do too much damage. Luckily, I was able to distract with those Barbarians, so it all worked out well. But as I was saying, guys, basically, uh, you know, you guys are smart enough to know that no matter what YouTube video you're watching or, you know, what streamer you're watching, there's no easy solution to get legendary cards. There's no easy way to level up super fast besides spending money obviously or donating a lot but that's not super fast there's no tricks there's no hacks you know so guys don't fall for any of that crap I don't want you guys uh, my viewers I care about you guys you know and I don't want you guys falling for for stuff like that and that goes to the best decks too you get you guys have to understand that every deck that I share with you guys and every deck that any content creator shares with you guys isn't gonna win but if you're winning more than you're losing then you're winning overall so keep that in mind as well so that's the goal here it's not to win every match but to win more than you lose and uh and i've won so far five out of five this video but that you shouldn't be deceived by that as well because like i said there are some people who are level eight like me over 2,000 trophies well over 2,000 trophies so certainly i'm pretty low so obviously the skill might not be as as good as it would be if i was higher in trophies now let me go ahead and pay attention to this match before i lose everything so this guy has an interesting deck a giant skeleton deck giant skeleton is not my favorite card kind of up there with rock Rocket and Expo and Mortar. I'm not a Siege player, uh, nothing against Siege players, but just not my style. But let me just put a cannon here, distract this Hog Rider. This guy's playing all the cards that I hate. He's playing the uh, Rocket and the Giant Skeleton. Now, there's nothing against Giant Skeleton, but I just feel like when I use him, he can be so easily distracted away from the tower and the giant bomb just goes to waste against any kind of savvy player for the most part. It's really difficult, at least for me, to get the giant skeleton onto my opponent's tower, and he costs enough elixir, and he's so slow moving that I feel like they can see it coming a mile away when, when I once they know that I have him, or once I know that he ha they have him, uh, if I can speak. So, 
<clears throat> let's go ahead and get this free spell down, and we're gonna get at least four hits off this tower. Look at that free spell. It seems to last forever. That's what I was saying about the free spell. This guy's pretty high in trophies, too, So uh, for a level eight, I should say. So I was late on that cannon there, and it looks like he's gonna take down my right tower. So for the first time, I think this episode, we are in, we are playing from behind here, guys. So let's go ahead and put a hog rider in the right lane, try to finish off this tower and try to even up the score. I have my freeze ready, but he uses the rocket on my hog rider. See, that was another bad value trade, but that made sense because he basically protected his uh, his tower and was able to maintain his lead. So I do have another elixir collector on the board. I like that I have the elixir advantage in a lot of these matches where I do play the elixir collector because for whatever reason, I don't see a ton of people playing elixir collectors, or at least not nearly as much as I do in legendary arena. So let's uh, freeze these guys because I cannot keep up with what he's doing right now. So don't be afraid to use freeze defensively too, guys. Obviously, you can see that could have been real trouble for me, but I uh, was able to really... Uh, let's, let's try to get something going here, by the way. Hog Rider and... Ooh, he uses... He, wow, that was interesting there. I would have used that rocket against my two musketeers because I think I might get this down here. I, fro I froze the tower uh, preemptively, thinking that he might drop something to counter. I don't know what he would have dropped there, but I was able to take down his tower. And look at this, guys. I have two Elixir Collectors on the board right now. I did a pretty crappy job of diversifying my lane. Actually, to be honest with you, I did a pretty crappy job of div diversifying my attack lane this entire video. I started out the video by saying how important it is to keep picking away at both of the towers, not just focus laser in on one all the time. You have to keep your opponent guessing. And of course, I did not do that in this episode at all. So, in these matches, I should say. So, uh, let's see what we can do here. We already have the Elixir Collector on the board. Let's do Skeleton Hog Rider here, although I did not, again, follow my own advice and drop that Hog Rider in the center there. Uh, but I am able to still pull off this free spell to get a few hits on that tower. Things are looking good, but the one thing about this deck is I have no direct damage, no fireball, but I have the zap, I guess, but I have nothing else. Uh, Actually, I don't even have Zap. I have Free Spell. I keep forgetting what deck I'm using. Sorry, guys. But I have no direct damage at all. So it's going to have to come down to this. Oh, and he is Johnny on the spot. I think this is going to be a tie, guys. It is going to be a tie. Boo! I felt like I was so close there, but probably paid, uh, probably played a little bit too passively. Uh, but that's going to be it, guys. You saw good examples, at least two matches with every single deck. Hopefully, you were able to pick up a tip or two. Thanks so much for staying till the end of this episode. I really appreciate it, guys. And as always, take care, guys.